I just want to invite you just to stand on your feet. We're going to just enter into worship. But first, all over the room, I just want you to lift up your hands and just begin to invite Jesus in the room. Jesus, we welcome you here tonight. We ask that you come and do what you want to do. We say you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. We invite you in the room. We invite you in the room. Come on, all over the room. Just begin to lift up your voice. Just begin to lift up a sound straight to him. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We're here for you tonight. Oh, we're here for you tonight. Come on, I want to invite all the worshipers down front. Come on down. Let's go ahead and just enter into his presence.
you to I want you to get ready to do that again but I just have to obey the spirit right now you know what when you raise your hands that's in Hebrew you'll die and it means to raise your hands and praise the Lord but it also means something else when they were in battle they would throw spears and they would throw arrows and it was also called you'll die it meant the same thing so the lifting of the hands in praise is not just a surrender, it's a battle sign. You're not just saying that I'm here to give you everything. That's wonderful that you're here to do that. But I'm not just saying, it's, no one has a gun saying stick them up. We're not here to just surrender. We're here to say, I'm coming to occupy till he comes. I'm coming to claim the ground that he's given to me. I'm come to declare what the Lord declared over me. I'm here to declare days fashioned for me when yet none of them existed. That's what I'm here to declare. Here's what I want us to do. I want you to get ready to sing just that chorus one more time and before you transition, but for before you do that for one minute, for one minute, I want to see everybody in this room. I want us to just have one minute of war that says we refuse to bow. We refuse to give in. We have worked too hard for our peace. We, we refuse to live in doubt. We refuse to live. I want you to declare right now over your life. 
Yes, I know it's Tuesday night. I know it's been a long day, but if you've got a fight left in you, I want you to lift up your hands all over this room right now and begin to declare, God, I'm claiming what is mine. I'm taking back what is mine. I'm standing my ground in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to declare it, declare it, declare it. It does not belong to your enemy. It belongs to you. It does not, your family doesn't belong to the world. It belongs to you for the next one minute fight. Come on, release your roar, fight. Open your mouth, release your praise. Fill this room with the glory of God. Declare it, declare it, declare it in Jesus' name. Declare it in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Yes, God.
trust in you, Jesus. We put our trust in you. All of our hope is in you. Oh, tonight we put our trust in you. Oh, Jesus, we put our trust in you. Yes, we do, Lord. All of our hope is in you. Oh, it's in you, Jesus. It's in you, Jesus. So we put our trust in you. Come on, sing that tonight. Oh, we put our trust in you. Yes, we do, Lord. We put our trust in you. from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy shout Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus there's no other name so shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets Over every enemy Shout Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus Come on, lift that up tonight Oh, we shout Jesus from the mountains And Jesus in the streets Shout Jesus in the darkness Over every enemy Shout Jesus for Speak the holy name of Jesus Cause there's no other name by which we're saved Oh, so shout Jesus from the mountain And Jesus in the streets Shout Jesus in the darkness Over every enemy Shout Jesus for my families I speak the holy name of Jesus just one more time with faith tonight shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets we shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy shout Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus oh one more time we sing tonight shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the sea shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy shout Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus cause your name is power and your name is healing your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire Say that again tonight Your name is power And your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. Oh, we put our trust in the name that's above every name. The name that's above every name. Oh, we love you, Jesus.
is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name And this is a house of healing Our hearts are full of faith God, you have our full attention And you have the final say So come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus Resurrection power Your blood runs through our veins And your kingdom triumphs over Even the coldest rain And there's a resurrection power Just obeying the Spirit tonight. This morning early in my prayer time, 
the Lord took me through a series of midnight hours where it looked like nothing was going to happen, but He came through anyway. I mean the 1159 hour. And it's like, okay, God, it's now or nothing. It's you or nothing. And what the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. Right this afternoon, Dean actually sent me a text and he said, this is a house of miracles. And when, when, when he began to sing, I didn't know you were gonna sing that song. The Lord began to tell me all the things he's been saying to me all day long. So I'm gonna give you an instruction. You don't have to do it. But if you do it, I'm telling you, God's gonna take notice if you do it. And this is all I'm saying. I want you to, first of all, ask big. Ask big. Stretch yourself, stretch your faith. Don't be afraid to ask God for something big. But here's the other thing too. And this is the step of faith that you gotta make. And I know, I know this is odd. It's not the altar call yet. But if you are one of those that says, I've got a miracle that I need in my life, here's what I want you to do. I want you to bring it to Him. I'm not asking you for an offering. I'm not asking you for money. But I'm asking you to get out of your seat and walk to the front and surrender to God. That is just a step of faith. That is all it is. It is just a step of faith. As they sing this again, I want you to believe God for the impossible. Believe God for the ridiculous. Believe God for things that you cannot do. Only He can come through. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. Hallelujah. This is the midnight hour for somebody. But God is on time. God is an on time God. God is an on time God. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah.
I want you to spend a few minutes thanking him for it. You've believed for it, now thank him for it. Thank him for it. Declare that it's already done. Thank him for it now. Just act like he put it in your hand just now. Just thank him for it, hallelujah. God, we've broken our pictures. We have blown our trumpets. It's the midnight hour. Come through with your army, God. Dispel the enemy, Lord. We've broken our pictures. We declared our trumpet. Now, God, we declare your glory. We declare your glory. Right now, just begin to thank him all over this room. Thank him all over this room. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When you get home tonight, I want you to walk in the door and I want you to declare that over your house. 
That's not just about this house. This is about your house. This is a house of miracles. You walk in your house and you say, by the blood of Jesus, I declare that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. And I testify that He is my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me explain something to you real quick. I don't want to get too deep theological, but let me explain something. This passage in Philippians, and I'm just going to paraphrase it. It's the passage that we quote all the time. It says, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But the verse before that says, it tells you what tongues are going to do that. Every tongue in heaven, every tongue on the earth, and every tongue under the earth. Now, what's he talking about? What does he mean every tongue in heaven, every tongue in the earth, every tongue under the earth? He's talking about that when you pray in, the, in your prayer language, when you speak in tongues, you're actually speaking a language somewhere. Now, it is unknown to you. That's why it's called an unknown tongue. But it's not a made up language. It's a real tongue. Somewhere in the world, either in heaven or in earth or under the earth, a dead language, that language has been spoken. That's why on the day of Pentecost, they understood every word they said. They spoke in tongues, but 15 nations understood them. How can these men be Galileans, speak our language when they've never learned our language? And I've witnessed this many times in my life. But here's, here's what I want you to know. Have you ever met a person who just got filled with the Spirit and it's like they get this little phrase and they say it over and over and over and over again. It's thinking, and you're thinking, that's not a language. That doesn't sound like, it's like they're just saying the same thing over and over and over. This little phrase they said over and over. Listen, you only have to say one thing in the Spirit to put devils on their knees. All you have to say is Jesus Christ is Lord. That's all you gotta say. If all you got was Jesus Christ is Lord in Chinese, that's all you need. If all you got is Jesus Christ is Lord in Korean, that's all you need. If all you got is Jesus Christ is Lord in some Indian language that no one has spoken in, that's all right, that's all you need. When you say Jesus Christ is Lord, every knee bows, Every when every tongue confesses, every knee bows to that name. So don't you worry about the fluency of your prayer language. If you got something that sounds like baby talk, you give it all you got, honey, because you're going to put devils to flight. One of these days, you'll be quoting scriptures in a language you didn't even know. Real quick, I was in El Salvador preaching. Actually, a, a young man who was on my team was preaching that night, Al Pache, and we had this, we had this altar call. And there was only 20 people in the building. These two little boys came up. One was about eight and one was about 10. Some of you guys have heard me tell this story before. And this little eight-year-old little boy, he starts saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He'd been praying for the Holy Ghost, you know, and he'd been there. He had prayed with everything inside of him. I mean, he was sweating. He was, he was gritting his teeth and had his fist all clenched. And he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And I was going, hey, wow, that was good. Who taught him that? And the little boy beside him is 10 years old. He said, he said, they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's what he said. And I'm, I'm there with one other person that speaks English. And I tell the missionary with me, I said, man, that's great. Somebody must have taught them some English. He said, listen, I've known those boys since the day they were born. They've never spoken one word of English in their life. He said, they just got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and God allowed them to speak in your language to verify the validity and the presence of the Holy Spirit. He allowed me to witness that firsthand. And these little boys were quoting scriptures. When Hong Ying, a missionary to China, he came here to study technology. Because he didn't know much about technology in English, he ended up in a theological school, not a technological school. He enrolled in a school of theology, not a school of technology. And the, the government was paying for it. And he gets here and he doesn't know what's going on. He's learning, he's barely learning in English. He goes to Atlanta, Georgia. A little lady with a beehive hairdo. Now there's a difference in a beehive and a hornet's nest. You gotta know the difference too. Because they look the same, but they're not the same. I wanna tell you that. This lady with a sweet little beehive hairdo come up to him and she's just giving you know, shaking her hand and praying. She not only she called him by name, Hong Yang. This is the Lord your God. You have never served me, but I'm calling you into ministry. 
He said not only did she speak Mandarin Chinese, she spoke it in the dialect of his local fishing village. This lady had no idea what she was saying, but the Holy Spirit called this young Chinese man. He's become one of the greatest missionaries I've ever known, have, has won over a, over a half a million people to the Lord in the underground church of China, just this one guy. Because of a little Pentecostal lady with a hairdo and a shaky hand speaking in Mandarin Chinese. So I wanna tell you, you wanna put the devil to flight? Pray in your prayer language. Don't be afraid to, you go in your house, if you don't know what to say, you just raise your hands and let the Holy Spirit flow through you. And if all you get is Jesus Christ as Lord, every knee has to bow to that. That's all you need to put the enemy to flight. Let's put our hands together one more time and thank God for his goodness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If, you, if, you, if there's anybody after COVID that allow you to hug their neck, hug their neck. If not, just fist bump them and you're good. All right? So good, do that on your way to your seat. Find your seat. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Woo, you guys are on fire up here tonight. How many of you are glad to be out on a Tuesday night? Well, that's about four of you. How about the rest of you guys? You glad to be here on a Tuesday night? There you go. You know, you've heard me say this before. The third day of the week, which is Tuesday night, is the only day of the week God blessed twice when he created the world. He, everything else he said, that was good. He said it twice, only on Tuesday because it was the third day. So it's, a, it's the most popular day in Israel for people to actually get married because they say it's the most blessed day of the week. So I'm gonna be glad to be in God's house on the most blessed day of the week, right? Amen. By the way, it's great to be back from Israel. Faith and I missed you guys. We've been gone for the last couple of weeks. It's good to be home and it's good to be here. It's good to be back with you guys, amen. Um, we are so honored tonight to have Tony Suarez with us. How many of you are happy to have him in the house tonight? I know that he has a great word. He's just come off of the road. He's still on the road. He's been on the road for uh, several days. Hasn't made it home yet and flew in today. He started in Denver this morning. And then he got into Dallas and we were nervous because it was snowing in Denver. And then when he got to Dallas, he got a flight delay and we just kept, yes, Jesus, get him here, get him here. Get... And he's here. Thank the Lord he's here. Not by the skin of his teeth, but he is here. And we're so happy about that. It's also great to have Pastor Andrew Tao in the house. Stand up, man. One of our favorite preachers around here. We love this guy. One of our favorite preachers. And he's preached here a lot. And he will be back again a lot more because we absolutely love it when you bring the word. Um, let's talk about a couple things. First of all, let's look to the screens. We've got some exciting things going on and uh, let's hear what the ladies have to tell us about. Hey guys, welcome to Ramp OCI. We are so excited to have you in the house tonight. It is gonna be a special treat for tonight. Tony Suarez is here and he's gonna be bringing a powerful message. Let's get to our announcements. You definitely want to continue to mark your calendars for December 13th. That is going to be our Searching for Christmas musical production. I think we mentioned at one point that it was a play, but I'm telling you, it is so much more than that. It's not actually a play. It is genuinely a production, like Broadway. And so you don't want to miss that. December 13th, 630. Invite your friends. We are so excited. Youth Encounter and RYA are having Friendsgiving this Friday at 6.30. We're gonna have lots of food, games, and fun. It's gonna be an amazing time. For more information, you can contact your leaders on how you can help. I love Friendsgivings. They're so awesome. Another day you wanna mark your calendars for is December 20th. That is our Christmas banquet. We're gonna have food. It's gonna be so much fun. You're gonna to wanna to sign up for that in the Connect Lounge and you're going to tell us uh, your name, uh, your number, and then who's coming with you, how many people. We want to make sure that we're prepared to feed everyone for fun food fellowship. The other thing that's going to be fun is we are doing a talent showcase for the entertainment that Ooh, night. So if you want to be a part of that, you're going to sign up for that also in the Connect Lounge right behind me. 
The Boys and Girls Club is still accepting gifts for this Christmas. If you would like to bring a gift, you can bring it right here into the lobby and drop it off into one of the bins. December 7th, we are having a Christmas wrapping extravaganza. <laughs> we are going to need all hands on deck. We need your help. We'll see you at 11 a.m. We know it's that time of year again. It's time for Christmas, presents, the whole shebang. We have someone here who is an incredible gift wrapper. Her name is Crystal, and she is going to be teaching a gift wrapping intensive this Saturday at 11 a.m. right here at Ramp OCI. So if you've always wanted to learn how to do fun, fancy gift wrapping, you want to make sure that you're here. There's going to be a list of supplies that you need, so sign up in the Connect Lounge for more information. We really hope that you join us because the artwork that's created while wrapping is genuinely incredible. ISO is having their final teaching of the year. It's going to be on 2 Corinthians. It's going to be an in-depth study with Matthew Foley. It's December 1st and 2nd from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You don't want to miss. You can go to ISO.org to register. Those teachings mm -hmm. are incredible. I love Matthew Foley. He always brings such a deep word. You really don't want to miss it. It really is in-depth. <laughs> Hey, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, I got it from the Ramp Bookstore. No way! Did you know that today the Ramp OCI Bookstore is officially open? <laughs> Let's go check out some of the things that they have. We are here live in our Ramp OCI Bookstore for the grand opening. So I want to show you guys some fun things that we've created. We have our Ramp OCI beanies. Yay. So awesome. We have our Ramp OCI mug. Miss Kristen is going to Vanna White it for you. <laughs> we also have this sticker. It says Ramp at OCI, Awakening the Generation. So that's just something fun you can, you know, put on a coffee cup or something. Don't forget bows and arrows from Ooh, our very important. own Dr. B himself. <laughs> we have so many other options, several different t-shirt choices, like probably 15 to 20, you would say, different authors. So you definitely want to come and check out what we have. This shirt is so comfortable and I believe they would make great Christmas gifts. So if you are just wondering, what could I get so-and-so for Christmas? Come check out and see what we have. Uh, we even have a, it's a flash sale. Yes. Uh, tell we, us about that. We have probably about 40 books on flash sale. We have $5 and $10 books that are amazing. We have some of Papa P's books out here, so you really want to catch it before they go out. I think we also have Miss Karen's, we've got Lauren's, we've got Lindsay's, we've got um, Jacob Peterson's, we have Bill Cloud, we have some books from John Kilpatrick. We have just an amazing amount of authors that have um, we've put in this bookstore for you, so you want to come check it out. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to have you. Make sure that you mark your calendars for all these dates. I know it's a lot to remember. Let's go ahead and get to our word. All right, good job, ladies. Good job, ladies. All right, a couple things real quick, and then we are going to get right into the word tonight. Uh, first of all, let me see, do we have any first-time guests with us tonight? Just lift your hand. Wow, several of you. Can we welcome all of our first-time guests? So great to have you tonight. And if you will go out the door that you came in tonight, go to our Connect Lounge. We have free gifts for you and a lot of information, uh, some booklets, and just uh, tell you more about ourselves. And there's a lot of exciting things going on in the next several weeks, so you don't want to miss those too. So go out there and talk to someone, and we'd love to have your name and give you a free gift and, uh, and also be praying for you. That's one of the benefits of being a first-time guest is that we'll put you on our prayer list and pray for you. So be sure and go by there and allow us to do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our kids right now. Uh, we love having them in for worship, but I know they love to go to their own worship as well. So uh, how many of you love having the kids in here? Show them how much you love them as we dismiss them. And then um, I, want to, I want to just tell you a, a couple of quick stories as we prepare our hearts for giving to the Lord tonight. And if you want to go ahead and pull up the, um, the giving link, that'll give everyone plenty of time. So if you want to give, you can either point your phone toward that QR code, and it will just take you to the giving link. You can also go, if you have the RAMP app, you can go there and give. Or you can also text to give there at, uh, just text RAMP OCI to the number on the screens, and it will prompt you how to give. 
So um, all of you know that I was a pastor for 27 years in St. Louis. And when Faith and I first went there, you know, our church was very small. It was not called Twin Rivers then. It was called Webster Groves Church of God. And the Webster Groves Church of God was a lot different from Twin Rivers, I promise you. And uh, we had about 50 people when we first went there. We were young, you know, early 20s ourselves, And just, you know, believed God for anything. And boy, it's a good thing we did because we needed everything. Have anybody ever been there before? You can believe God for everything because that's exactly what you needed. And um, so we had started growing uh, after a few years of being there. And our building was, was, would only hold like 250 people. And so um, we were running more than that. And, you know, we didn't, there weren't a lot of churches doing two services then. We tried that. And that was going pretty good too. And, but we needed a bigger building. So there was a building down the street, which was the Nazarene Church building. And it was huge. It would seat about 1,200 people. It was very nice. And I knew that the Nazarene Church was having a lot of trouble. I didn't know exactly why, but I knew their crowd had gone way down, and they couldn't hardly pay their bills. I was in the ministerial association, and the pastor would often do prayer requests. So I said, well, Lord, you know, I'm going to pray and believe that maybe we can swap buildings. And then he, he could use my building because it would fit his congregation, and I definitely need his building because we're growing. So I started praying, and I felt like the Lord told me to do this, okay? And so I thought that the Lord, and I know the Lord told me to do it. The Lord said, well, I want you to go march around his building like the walls of Jericho. And so, you know, I go out, and I'm an early riser, and I didn't want anybody to see me on the Nazarene property marching around their building because I'm a local pastor, which is about a mile from them. And so I'm thinking, okay, I need to go early. So about 5 o'clock every morning, I'd go, I'd go my first day. I went one lap around the building praying. Second day, one lap around the building. I had to do it for seven days. It was the March of Jericho, the Walls of Jericho moment. So my seventh day, I even had to do it on a Sunday morning because, you know, you got seven days there, right? You can't skip one. So I think it might have been a Monday or a Tuesday. And uh, it was the day that I did my seven, my seven rounds. So I get there very early, and I'm doing my seven rounds, and, you know, I'm dancing, I'm jumping, I'm doing all the things that I need to be doing, you know, to really get God's attention, I think. And so when I finish all of this, I go seven, seven rounds, and you have to shout, right? That's what you do on the seventh round. Shout, and God will give you the city. So I shouted. I didn't have a shofar in those days. I have one now, but I didn't have one then. So I just, you know, I just shouted and danced and jumped around, claiming that building. Boy, I was so excited. So I waited a while, and I'm thinking, I don't, I, don't know if, I don't know when to approach him. So I finally asked him to lunch. And so... Um, he, he and I met at a, a restaurant there in Webster Groves, and I said, um, Les, I want to talk to you about something. You know, I've got a building. You've got a building. We're a mile from each other. I said, what would you think about swapping buildings? And it was about a month uh, had gone by, and he said, um, I said, you know, you, you've put in this prayer request many times at the Ministerial Association. And he said, well, um, Brian, I'll, I'll be honest with you. If you would have come to me a month ago and asked me to do this, I was so desperate that I would have probably taken it to my board. But he said, we don't know what happened, but revival has broken out in our church. <laughs> he said, we can't even explain it. But he said, people are coming back. Our offerings are going up. He said, man, I wouldn't give up this building now for anything. He said, we can't even explain it, but something has happened. It's, and then he said, it's like the walls of Jericho have broken down. <laughs> I'm thinking, at a na God, they're Nazarene. Come on, help me out here. No, I love the Nazarene. And so, um, and so I learned about obedience that way. And the Lord said, sometimes, you know, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And the Lord taught me that principle. And so many years later, or not many years later, actually it wasn't very long from them, we, need, we desperately needed to build him. And uh, we, had, we had grown very fast in a short amount of time, and we just didn't have any money. And so um, we were, our building still had debt. We were paying off the, we just tried to pay down the mortgage and almost finished. So we had $10,000 in this little fund. And I said, okay, God, when, when you had me to go pray for Gill's church, you said what I make happen for others, you'll make happen for me. And so you know what I need here, and we're desperate. So I have this $10,000, and I can't build a church in St. Louis, Missouri for $10,000, but I can build one in El Salvador for that. And so I took 37 builders down to El Salvador to San Jose, and we built this church for a blind pastor who had been praying, he and his church had been praying because they had no money. 
that God would help them build a church. So we just show up, all the building material, all the labor, and we built them a whole church. This blind pastor was walking around, filling the walls and just crying. And he was touching. We even made him a pulpit out of, you know, out of lumber. And he's filling the pulpit. And he's just so grateful to have all that. And so, you know, at the end, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, you had me to march around the walls of Jericho. I made that happen for someone else. You said you'd make it happen for me. And now I've given away the only little bit of money we had. Now I've built a whole church, but we need a church. So I go back home and now I'm just trusting God because I've, I've obeyed. That's, that's the point I'm getting to. I've done two acts of obedience and I would have done three or four or five if he, if he asked me to. But I've done these two major acts of obedience, still trusting God for a miracle. Didn't know what to do and one day my phone rang Another pastor across town came, and we were right on the corner there, Big Ben and, and Glendale Road, and it was a major thoroughfare there in Webster Groves. And so this pastor called. He said, listen, we need a new building, and I want to come and make you an offer. Well, I had already appraised our building. I knew what it was worth, but I didn't know what he was going to offer, so I was curious. And so he comes to my office, and he said, I'm going to bring a check if you, if, if you accept my offer, I, I, I want to give you this check. So this guy, they had their money all laid out. He comes to my office, hands me a check for three times what our building is worth. Three times what, he didn't need a loan, he had cash. Three times what anybody would have ever paid us for that building, he gave it to me. And I said, uh, I think my board's going to be okay with this, but give me a week. Man, I called an emergency meeting, and we sold that building right then and there because what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And we had no idea of the journey we were going to go on. We, had, we met in a school, and we moved 18 times. And every time we moved, I said, Lord, why again? We moved 18 times in schools over about a four-year period of time before we landed on the building that, that the Lord gave to us there in, uh, in uh, Afton or in Tesson Ferry Road. And we, we did that 18 times. And I asked the Lord, why are we moving? And then we figured it out. Every time we moved, we won people from that community to the Lord. It was like when we left that building, uh, we had about 400 people in our church. Okay, when we left that building, we only seated 250 and so we were running 400. When we left that building, went to the first school, we had 400. By the time we got in our building, we were already running over 1,000 people. And we did that moving 18 times without a sign, without a, without a business card. It was all word of mouth. And people didn't even know where we were going to be from week to week because we moved so many times. But I'll never forget the day one of the janitors walked out of the back and came to the altar. They were just there to open the building and clean up after us. And when I saw that happen, I'm thinking, okay, God, I know the importance of this journey. It's about obedience. We didn't get what we wanted exactly the way we wanted it, when we wanted it, but when God got through, he gave us so much more than we could have ever even imagined. So obedience is better than sacrifice. So I want you tonight to give. Yes, we give because it's time to give. We give because we believe in tithes and offering. But I want you to give because you have no idea what God's about to do in your life. You have no idea what God is going to do for you. When we sing that song tonight, this is a house of miracles, there was something released in my spirit. And I knew, I knew in my spirit that when people started walking to the front, that God was going to start releasing miracles for them. And I can't wait to hear the testimonies because I know they're coming in. I just know that. Some of you have been here many times when I said somebody's been healed and please call me and tell me. And the next week I'll say, we got four calls, exactly what God said he was going to do, he did. Remember the night I was preaching in the middle of the sermon out of nowhere? I said, oh my goodness, God's going to pay off somebody's debt. And of course, everybody claimed it. <laughs> Who wouldn't, you know? Everybody said, that's me, that's me, that's me. But within 48 hours, two people had called us that had major debts paid off Debt, canceled debts in their life because God said he was going to do it. I've quit trying to figure out the timing of the Lord. But one thing I have is faith in the Lord. And I know that he will come through when you need him right on time. So I trust him. Uh, can I be honest? I mean, can I be a little transparent? I, I don't trust the government anymore. I know you do, but I just don't. 
I, 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 I hate to say that, but I just don't. I don't trust the media anymore. Maybe you do. If you do, you need to be in the prayer line. But I just, you know, I just, I just don't. And, and, but I still trust the Lord. I ha that has not wavered. The found, when the foundations are removed, when the foundations are being destroyed, the psalmist David said, what can the righteous do? You know what the answer he gave? Put your trust in the Lord. And I can tell you, even if the foundations are being destroyed, the righteous have something we can do. Put your trust in the Lord. God will never let you down. Now, whether you're giving uh, cash or a check, you can write it to RAMP a ramp OCI, or you might be like me, you might be a phone giver, and that's how I give. And I, you know what? I've been in Israel for the last, I've been out for the last couple of weeks on a trip to Israel, but I gave both weeks, I paid my tithes, because it's on reoccurring giving, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So I was here, you didn't think I was here, but I was here, and I was paying my tithes, and I did watch online, and, uh, and it was a great service. Thank the Lord for that. I want you to prepare your hearts to give right now. Father, Lord, you have taught me over and over and over that if we, trust you and if we walk in obedience God sometimes you have us to create a miracle before you give us a miracle sometimes you ask for us elaborate acts of faith before we actually see what you're about to do in us Lord we know we can't buy your favor we can't buy your miracles and that's not what we're trying to do we're just trying to walk in obedience so Lord, tonight I pray Lord that each of us would obey that's all we can ask for. Let each of us obey. And the walls of Jericho will come down. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to bring your gift to the Lord right now as we uh, celebrate in song. Amen. bless you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify you, Jesus. Honor you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Praise the Lord. Listen, we are so honored tonight to have an evangelist that God is using literally across this country. And I don't know how many of you have heard Tony Suarez preach, but after you hear him tonight, you will want to hear him again. He has preached on TV. He's preached around in camp meetings. As a matter of fact, he was telling me about a huge tent that the Lord gave him, and he was even doing tent meetings. He set up a tent in the middle of covid 4,000 people in Nashville coming out to a tent meeting in, during COVID. That's amazing. And the Lord has used him over and over and over. I won't, I won't uh, belabor bringing him on because I know that he's got a word. Listen, this man of God started out in Denver, Colorado this morning. He flew into Dallas, and then he flew into Chattanooga, and he is here. He's had a long day of travel to get here. We are so thankful. He's been, he's been on the road for several days. I know he's anxious to get home. He actually lives in Tennessee. Yes. He is, lives in Johnson City, Tennessee. And you may not know where that is, but I know where that is because I was born just a few miles from there in Greenville, Tennessee. So that's my old stomping ground, the Tri-Cities area. So all, I still have relatives up there. If you go to Atlanta, if you go to any place, you can't find any cut shawls. Go to Greenville, Tennessee, and the phone book has pages of them. They're clannish, man. They just don't move. But a few of us got away, so praise the Lord. We are so thrilled. I know that I don't have to ask you to honor a man of God the way a man of God needs to be honored. 
The Bible tells us to give honor to whom honor is due, and there's honor due this man of God. So I want you to welcome him properly as we would welcome a man that's carrying an anointed word tonight. Would you clap your hands and give God praise in this house for everything he's done and everything he's about to do. I praise your holy name, mighty God. Hallelujah! On Saturday night, I was in Roanoke, Virginia. Sunday morning, I was in Lexington, Kentucky. Sunday night, I was in somewhere outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Yesterday, I was in Denver, and now I'm back here in the Holy City. Hallelujah. God bless you all. And I'm going to go. And, and somewhere in between there, I stopped and got some new clothes and made sure that all of our kids were still living in the house and made sure my wife was still there waiting for me when I get home tonight at some point or tomorrow, whenever I go home. But <clears throat> I heard a song. Now, nobody asked me to sing except my mother. I love her. Nobody ever asked me to sing, but I heard a song. And when I find a song that really resonates with me, I wear that thing out. I can't listen to anything else. My wife grabbed my arm two days ago. She said, I'm going to give you to the end of the year to get that thing out of your system, which usually it's a few days. But I heard this song, and it simply says, God made it fail. I never heard it before. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know where it came from but it's the song of my heart and as I was sitting in this house I think I've only said this maybe two or three times and I know we're just meeting for the first time and so I should just be like real cool but I'm real weird and I looked up there's a portal to heaven somewhere around here I've only seen it in like two other churches and I looked up and I saw it written out. It said, this is the house that Pentecost built. That's what I saw written in this portal to heaven. This is the house that Pentecost built. And I want to sing. I, I know it sounds so dumb. But I want to sing something over you today. In the key of F. We, is that still F there? It simply says, God, God, God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. Now, that might not mean anything to you, but you got to know my story. Six years ago, I buried my first wife because she passed away from leukemia. I was left a single father of three children. I buried my father 15 months before I buried my first wife. You think you had a bad day? I lived through the valley of the shadow of death for 18 months. I had more funerals than you should have in a lifetime in the span of 18 months. The devil attacked my marriage, attacked my children, attacked my ministry. But you know what? God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried God made it fail and I came to prophesy over you God made it fail I don't know what he's done to you but God made it fail everything the devil tried God made it fail but this is a Pentecostal song so let's do it Pentecostal God made it fail God made it fail everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. You still know how to clap? And everything the devil tried, God made. I'm going to sing it over you till you believe it. God made it fail, God made it fail, everything the devil tried, God made it fail, 
God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it. Maybe you forgot. COVID, a pandemic, racial tension, political division, hell has come against you, but God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. You shouldn't be here tonight. You shouldn't be preaching the way you've been preaching. But God made it fail. I just heard God speak to my spirit. I got a sermon to preach, but God said this is a breakthrough service for someone in this house. He said, if you'll praise me according to the level of breakthrough you need, this will be the night that I thwart the plans of the enemy. This is the night that I bring confusion into the corridors of hell. This is the night that I give you the victory. If you'll praise me tonight with a breakthrough praise, God said, I'll make everything, every life, every attack God made it fail everything the devil tried God made it fail God made it fail oh I feel him here oh and everything the devil tried God made it Come on, just give him a wild praise tonight. A breakthrough praise from the front to the back, the left to the right. You watching at home, give him a God made it fail praise right now. Maybe you haven't been attacked, but he's come against me. I got a boy at home who's had four dislocated knees in six months. I come home from seeing multitudes of people get healed to a 12 year old holding his knee death saying, Daddy, I don't understand what's wrong with my knee. And the devil attacks me at night. He says, you preach healing everywhere, but look at what I'm doing to your house. But I'm going home to Johnson City tonight to tell the devil, God made it fail. You attacked me too much. I talk about she. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. Cause my son's gonna be healed. Everything the devil tried, God made it. Some of you have been trying to block out the pain of what you're going through the sleepless nights, the tears, the anguish, the depression. And so you've just been trying to ignore it. Tonight, I tell you, get it in your mind right now. Think about how he attacked your children, how he attacked your marriage, how he attacked your money. And I want you to get angry at hell tonight. I want you to get angry at the devil tonight. And I want you to realize not only what you've been through, but look at the reality that not only have you been through it, you've come through it. And you're a living witness that no weapon formed against you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So I want you to get that memory, what should have killed you, 
what should have messed you up, what should have knocked you out. And with that memory, say, God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God, I worship you. God made it fail. God made it fail. And everything the devil tried, God made it. Come on, just a little while longer till we break through. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. And everything the devil tried, God made it fail. Come on, if you're watching at home right now, the same anointing that's in this house can be in your house. You need to give them a God made it fail shout right now. And this same anointing will break through at your house. Healing, victory, prosperity, anointing, everything the devil fail, everything he tried, God is going to make it fail. Give him a hand clap of praise in this house right now. So tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. For five days, five days, I think I'm going to preach here in a minute. But if I preach tonight, it'll only be the second time in five days I've actually been able to preach. Because there's a breakthrough anointing. America thought a red wave was coming this past week. I prophesied a week ago Saturday. What you think is a red wave won't be what you think it is. It's going to be a bloodbath, saith the Spirit of the Lord. For I'm going to cleanse the nation of its corruption. I'm going to cleanse the nation of its sin. And yea, I'll move through the Capitol. I'll move through the White House. But this is not a political thing. This is a spiritual thing. You're dealing with personalities, but I, the Lord, am dealing with principalities. And I'm declaring to you, we've broken through something. Everything that Absalom has stolen... I'm coming against the spirit of Absalom tonight. The spirit of thievery. The spirit of Absalom is broken over Cleveland, Tennessee. Broken over this ministry tonight in the name of Jesus. And I command everything stolen, everything lost, be recuperated in the spirit right now. Because God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried took my wife took my dad was a single dad but God made it fail didn't know if my children would serve the Lord but on her deathbed my 10 year old son said I need to talk to mom and he got up by her deathbed and he said mom I'm gonna make you proud I'm gonna live for God I'm gonna serve God and if dad gives me permission I'm gonna be baptized at your funeral and that might sound fanatic to some of you, but at my wife's funeral, I buried her in the ground, but I buried my three children in the waters of baptism. That symbolizes death. This symbolizes life. That symbolizes depression. This symbolizes joy. That symbolizes sickness. This symbolizes healing. You know what happened that day? God made it fail. God made it fail. My children shouldn't be serving the Lord. But everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. 
God made it fail Everything the devil tried God made it fail I speak that over you today we're gonna make a uh, listen I'm originally from Chicago so if I say something a little too strong you forgive me but we're gonna make a fool out of the devil by the end of this year he's gonna wish he would have never touched our family touched our children I'm telling you that the devil knows how to get me he tries to mess with my kids devil you should have left my kids alone I'm gonna beat you up silly for what you've tried to do to my family I'm claiming a bigger harvest of souls I'm claiming a bigger harvest of healing a bigger harvest of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost you need to do that for your family right now I'm talking to someone that has a wayward son or daughter God's gonna make the plans of the enemy fail that I call that son home I call that daughter home in the name of Jesus of now I call your money home I call your ministry home everything the devil tried I decree over you God's gonna make it fail because we have victory I'm gonna preach in a minute but I feel one more roar of praise that needs to come from the people of God. Oh, oh hallelujah. So tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Today, you change position. Your posture changes. For you've been in a season of battle, saith the Lord. But I'm bringing you through the battle onto the other side. You say, oh no, another battlefield. The Lord says, no, my son, no, my daughter. The other side is victory. No longer do you stand in this field of fighting. I'm taking you into the field of victory. From now on, you're going to see everything from the perspective of victor, of victory. You're not going to fight anymore. For I, the Lord, have seen your affliction, and I've seen how you fought. And the Lord says, enough is enough. You don't fight. I'm going to fight on your behalf. And not only will I fight, but I'm going to win the victory for you. So now, from this day forward, you declare I got victory whatever you've been fighting whatever you've been going through I got victory over that whatever your children are going through my children have victory over that whatever you've been having to deal with I got victory over that I decree over you that while others are damning this country I declare there's victory over the United States there's revival over the United States don't stop listening to the polls stop listening to the surveys and listen to what saith the Spirit of the Living God he said in the last day I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh these are the days that were spoken of by the prophet Joel these are the days of the latter revival Whew. You can be seated for a moment, and I'll just stand here. Whew. Whew. I can't get that song. I'm telling you, people on the airplanes are looking at me like I'm funny. When the flight, the only good thing that came out of the, the, the only good thing came out of a flight delay in Dallas was I got fajitas, hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God. I'm sitting there eating my fajitas, minding my own business with my earphones in it because I get that little Pentecostal jerk you know and I'm just whew, I just went down right in the chair and people are like oh are, are you are you okay is the salsa too hot I'm like no God made it fail glory to God they're like the salsa I'm like no 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 I don't have time to tell you everything that's failed I'm a living witness I know I should get off of here but I'm a little insecure about my height after seeing brother Cutshaw you know so I'm just trying to make up for two feet that I'm missing there you know <laughs> God made it fail I, didn't, I had no intention in telling my testimony tonight Brother, uh, Pastor and, and, and First Lady Castillo are here from Miami my friends have preached there, they've heard my story they were with me through the valley of the shadow of death, they were with me when I had lost my first wife, they were with me when I was single, they were with me when you know because the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone 
Hallelujah. And God brought Gina into my life. And when God brought Gina into my life, you know, because I'm like, I'm really churchy. And like, I didn't know how to date in my 40s. There was no social media. Someone said, I said, how do you meet people? You know, Pastor, T Pastor Tao, I'm glad to meet you for two reasons. Number one, I've wanted to meet you. We've connected on social media. Number two, now I know how to pronounce your last name because I thought it was Toe. And when he said Tao is here, I'm like, oh my God, Pastor Tao and Pastor Toe are here. Then I find out it's the same person. Oh my God, it's like the Godhead. Anyways. But there was no social media. So I'm asking my friends, how do you meet, like, how do you meet people? And they're like, oh, you got to slide in their DMs. I said, I can't slide in their DMs. I'm in, I'm in ministry. I, I got to live in holiness. I, I, I can't. They're like, no, no, that just means send a message. I'm like, well, why don't you just say that? It sound a little easier to say, send a message. Well, I sent a message to Gina. She's too pretty for me. But I said, I'm just going to, you know, maybe God will make it fail. Maybe God will make it fail. And she won't look at my picture. So we go on our date. And I'm, you know, she shows up and she's, you know, looking all cute and stuff. Hey, I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> she's like, would you pray for the food? I'm like, sure. I'm like, Father, I take authority over every carbohydrate, over every calorie. God going to make it fail tonight. Everything the devil tried, every bit of cholesterol. I mean, I'm telling you, this is the way I am. It's a miracle I'm married. And, uh. I told her my story and then she started telling me her story. She buried her first husband who had died of colon cancer 10 years prior to her and I meeting. She had a five-year-old and a one-year-old at home when Corey died. I had a 10, eight and six-year-old at home. And she started telling me about how God made a way for her and how God blessed her and how she was raising her children in the admonition of the Lord. And we have two people that have gone through the same fight one in Michigan, and I was living in Virginia at the time, and God saw fit to bring, people, bring us together. You know, as Pentecostals, we can't drink. We're not supposed to. So we can't go to the bar. Not supposed to. So we do what we do. I went to camp meeting. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I go, I go sloppy drunk at camp meeting. And I'm at camp meeting, and Pastor Parsley calls me out 2017. He said, God said, ah, he's going to return to you seven times. And it just starts beating his head. Seven times what the enemy stole. Seven. He kept saying seven. And I might not be good at math, but I knew I wasn't going to have any more babies in the name of Jesus. So I'm trying to figure out how we get to seven. Because there's me and my three. And then God sent Gina, Mylan, and Macy. And it was at the wedding when the word of prophecy came back to me. And I looked and I said, oh my, there's seven people here. Seven broken people that have lived through the valley of the shadow of death. But God made us one whole, healthy, happy family. Now, I had no intention in telling that story tonight. Except to tell someone tonight that feels broken. That everything the devil tried is going to fail. You're going to laugh again. You're going to be joyful again. You're going to prosper again. And you're going to do it in the face of the enemy. And he's going to wish he would have never touched you. I claim to harvest against hell. You need to get mad enough tonight that you say, devil, for what you did to my kid, that costs you a million dollars. For what you did to my marriage, that's going to cost you a hundred thousand souls. For what you did, I, I mean... Do it to the point to hell says, you know what? Leave them alone because every time we hit them, we, pay, we have to pay out more than what it costs us to go to war with that family in the first place. Fight him and make him pay until he says, just leave them alone. It's too expensive to touch the Cutshaws. It's too expensive to touch the Suarez. It's too expensive to touch the towels and the toes and everyone else that's connected to that family. In Jesus' name. It's so good to be with you all tonight. And uh, I got some product in the back. I don't really want to talk about this because I want to preach to you. There's three books. Uh, my new book just came out. Uh, it's called Revival Makers. God spoke a word to me last year. He said, tell my people, I don't need revival chasers. I need revival makers. We've been chasing a move of God all over the world. We chased him to Azusa. Then we heard he was in Columbus 
and we all ran to Dominion. And then someone said, no, 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 he's in Brownsville. So we all bought tickets and went to Brownsville. We ran out of money and found out he was in Toronto. So we had to ride a bus or a train and get up to Toronto. Passport expired and couldn't get back to the U.S. We've just been chasing the move of God everywhere. He said, remind my people, they're Mark 16 believers. These signs follow them that believe. And so I believe this book will help you to become a revival maker in your family, in your society. What America needs tonight is not a third political party. It needs the third great awakening. What America needs is a church that identifies more with Jesus Christ than any other thing and would be a revival maker for this nation. So that's out there. There's a book I wrote called The Triumphant Church because I'm tired of people talking junk about the church. Listen, let me tell you something about polls. A poll will always say what the person that paid for the poll wanted it to say. So if the pollster wanted it to say that Gen Z doesn't love God, that's what the poll's going to say. They're manipulated. Don't go to the poll first. Go to the word first. The Bible says there shall be light in the evening time. The Bible says the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. My daddy's in heaven. One of the gate great generals of the faith. I toured his ministry facility today. T.L. Lowry's in heaven. T.L. I don't know how it works, but if they're looking over the balcony of heaven, they're not reminiscing for days gone by. They're saying, wow, they get to be alive for the greatest days of the church. This is still a triumphant church. And God could have entrusted the last day revival to any general of the faith. He could have given it to Oral Roberts or T.L. Lowry. Could have given it to Alan and Branham and Cole and any of the eight other great heroes of the faith. But he trusted you. Let that sink in tonight. God trusts you with this church. I'll never forget, I had old general of the faith named T.F. Tenney. We're doing a television program one day, and he looked at me. He said, Brother Tony, God trusts you with this church. Whoa, what? He said, he trusts your generation. And that's why he let you be alive for such a time as this. There's another book out there that I wrote called Defeating the Spirit of Hyena. I really didn't come to pitch books, but they're out there and they do help feed starving children in Johnson City. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So those are available out there. Thank you, Pastor, for welcoming me to your house. I give honor to you and to your wife, Sister Stone. I give honor to you tonight. I honor you and your husband. I am an old soul. Um, I'm 42, but in my head, I'm like 84 and a half. And I was raised in Chicago. When I was four years old, uh, I'd put on a little suit, sit in front of the television and watch PTL and watch Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart on Channel 38, Jerry Rose in Chicago. And I remember one time, the first time, I may have been eight or nine years old, the first time Perry Stone came on television in Chicago with Steve Muncy preaching about end time prophecy. I got so scared I was going to hell and I was going to miss the rapture at eight. Because I got my name on the board in the first grade. I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to go to hell. I go home and Brother Stone's teaching. I don't, I, it, it was about, he was, I can, I have a weird memory. He was teaching, <laughs> he was teaching about the beast and explaining out of some Jewish customs and mysticism and different things about how the beast could possibly be created. I didn't sleep for five nights without the lights on. I'm telling you, I thought I was going to hell. But I want you to know the legacy of Perry Stone, he scared me out of hell. Glory to God. How many can testify today? <laughs> I'm going to mention something about that fear because that's one thing about my generation, Generation X, and of course baby boomers and previous generations, there was a healthy fear of the coming of the Lord. And we knew he could come at any moment, so we were living ready. We need to get back to that. The book of Ephesians chapter 5. Pastor, if I take too much time, please, it's your house. You're the elder. Just shut me up and I'll sit down and I'll just go back to singing God made it fail. Not about you shutting me down. I'm just saying I'll just sing it in general. Ephesians 5, 15 through 18. I give honor to the Castillos that are here from Miami. They pastor a Holy Ghost filled, spirit filled, I mean, revival, church. And listen, Pentecost is good in English. You ought to hear it in Spanish. <laughs> you get that little bounce over there. We, I mean, we get like a violent Pentecostal helicopter. I mean, our hairs, I mean, you don't know. It's called Raja Tabla. And anyway, so you don't have to, we don't have time for that tonight. I just want to know is different hallelujah ephesians 5 15 through 18 
and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, not because it's more spiritual than the others. It's just the one I understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says it this way. Be careful how you live. Someone say, don't get mad at the preacher. All right, because it's about to get rough here. Don't live like fools. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. And make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. But instead, now I'm going to go into King James. Be ye filled of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight. Filled and full. Father, use me for your glory tonight. Touch our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our minds to discern what thus saith the word of the Lord. I ask that you would confirm it with signs, miracles, and wonders so that when we leave this house, we'll say, surely we have been in the presence of God. And I say the house is ready. In Jesus' name, and everybody said. Amen. My family um, knows that if you live in our house, anything you do, say, or might happen to you is at risk of being used in a sermon. My family are living parables. And if you slip and fall, I'm going to use it in a story about restoration. You get money, I'm going to use it in a story about, I, I will use anything. And so I want to open this by telling you a story about something that happened to my wife and I. We're, we're evangelists. We travel full time. And so when I get home, I'm home. And I had been gone kind of like on this trip I had been gone several days in a row five six seven days in a row I think on that particular trip and one of the things that my wife and I like to do when I'm home is after we get the kids to school we get lost no GPS no map we we have a little little convertible we get in the car and we just go get lost in the mountains and we just see where we end up we like to go antiquing we just like ending up in these little towns all up in the mountains and you just never know what you're gonna find and and, and so we just drive all over and so she called me and she said babe she said listen I'm gonna pick you up you don't even need to come home I'm gonna pick you up from the airport just throw your bag in the trunk and let's just go I said all right and so I get there, and she's already got the top down. She's got her sunglasses on, and she's got the, my wife is real classy. She's got the little scarf, and I think she turned, the, there was no wind, but she turned on the air conditioning really hot. I mean, just so that everything be blowing in the wind. I mean, she looked like a movie star in the car, and I mean, no wind anywhere, but in the convertible, there was just a wind blowing on my wife. And uh, I am very churchy, not 2022 churchy. I'm like 1989 churchy, okay? In my head, there's still hymnals, it's camp meeting, and we're all wearing white dress shirts with red ties and suspenders, and you women still have your hair stacked up to your glory to God. I, I'm just, I'm churchy. It's camp meeting in my head all the time. If, if, if I ever get invited to, to do one of those end time conferences, I'll mess up your theology. I don't think Gabriel's going to sound the trumpet. I think Gabriel plays the organ in heaven. I don't think John the Revelator got it right. I think he pushed the button on the Leslie and it went and John thought it was the trumpet because they're Pentecostal up there. I'll tell you, I mess up your theology tonight. So I always got organs and tambourines and hand clapping and toe tapping in my head and I got it on my phone too. Well, not only am I Pentecostal, my car is Pentecostal. And so when my iPhone connects to my car, my car starts, God made it. And so I was getting close to the car and it connected to my phone and it started playing an old Southern gospel song that most of you aren't even going to know. But I mean, apparently my wife didn't know that the volume was all the way up. And so I'm getting close to the car and it just starts blaring at the Johnson city, uh, at the Johnson city airport. Let's have a revival from the pulpit to the pew. Let's have it. And I just went right into that church of God and prophecy hop right there. I'm just that two hop right there. I mean, I'm just, cause I, it, it'd come on me anywhere. She doesn't like going shopping with me. Cause I mean, it'll, I'll, I'll catch it. I'll catch the ghost anywhere. And I caught it getting close to the car. And I, I listen, you, we, we've only known each other about 15 minutes. I'm this way all the time. I, I'm not faking. Like I'm getting close to the car. I, I don't care. I start hopping. People smoke in front of me. People cuss in front of me. Why don't I hop in front of them? So I start hopping. She's like, would you stop? She's like, turn that stuff off. 
can you turn on something a little more romantic? And I'm like, 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 like hill songs? I mean, like, what, what are you looking for exactly? I mean, I don't know. I'm like, oh, you want your worldly filth. I'm like, she, she wants Sinatra. I'm like, man, I'm like, woman, that was the song of the devil in the 40s. But she said, just something a little more romantic. So she, you know, fly me to the moon. I'm like, baby, I don't fly to the moon. I serve the sun. Glory to God. So it's a miracle I'm married. I'm telling you right now, I don't know. I don't know how she, I know how God made it fail. Anyways, we get in the car. And so, you know, good humor the wife. You want to stay married. So she's got her worldly music playing and, you know, the devil's dancing in the car. And we got, you know, I mean, I'm joking. I'm halfway joking. I mean, it's nothing bad. Well, and we're just driving. And she says, hey, babe, do we got gas in the car? I said, babe, it's 20. I mean, I think it was 20. And I don't know what year. 2021, 2022. I'm like, babe, Really? I'm like, if we run out, it's going to ping, beep, and we know to stop and get gas. I'm like, don't worry. I never bothered to look at the gas gauge. I just took off driving, and this time we went into the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. Beautiful, beautiful mountains. And I mean, there literally is a Blue Ridge over the mountains. It's beautiful. And so we're up lost in the Blue Ridge Mountains driving around when all of a sudden I hear beep. 20 miles till empty. I said, see, babe, I told security's coming. I promise I didn't do anything. Oh, that's just this, the worship uh, team. I'm sorry. I, get, I promise you, you get nervous. People are like, why are you getting I'm from Chicago. I'm here under the witness protection program. That's why I live in Tennessee. I mean, I got a testimony. God made it fail. <laughs> so the car beeps. I said, babe, now we're going to get gas. Well, then it beeped again, 15 miles to empty, 10 miles to empty, eight, seven, six, five, because I couldn't find a gas station anywhere. It's like I was living in the Dr. Seuss book, Green Eggs and Ham, because I looked here, I looked there, I looked everywhere, and I could not find a gas station, Sam, I am. Turns out that in the Blue Ridge Mountains, there's a bunch of tree-hugging hippies that live up there that have money, and none of them have gasoline cars anymore, driving around in their electric vehicles. I couldn't find a gas station anywhere. I get down to about three miles to empty, and I pulled over on the side of the road, and I got a little, I'm extra, you know? I got a little loud with my wife. I said, turn that filth off. She said, why? I said, woman, I have to decree and declare a gas station into existence right now, and I can't do it with the devil's music playing. Turn that off. And then I ducked in case she hit me. I'm just kidding. Now, I'm halfway joking, but I'm halfway serious. I started praying. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare a gas station's coming around that side of the hill. Either it's going to be created or it's going to be restored, but I decree that gas station. And as far as I'm concerned, I spoke that thing into existence because just beyond the thicket, <laughs> I saw a little two-pump mobile gas station. And I pulled in there, and this old man comes up pulling, putting his suspenders on, had big old blue baggy jeans and a white ripped up t-shirt, put, putting his suspenders on. What can I do you for? I said, I'm here for gas. You are? It's like, I'm like, who else is in the witness protection program, my man? I mean, why is it surprised you came to gas station for gas? He had to flip a switch on the pump, and that thing just started. And if you can't tell, I can't stand still, ever. So I'm pacing in front of the car. I didn't even know the God made it fail song yet, but that's really what was happening in my head. I'm like, everything, I'm just pacing in front of the car. I got to thinking about my dad. And I looked at Gina in the car. I said, Gina, you know who this would have never happened to? Because I realized I had an audience of one. I could preach to that lady now. I'm like, Ooh, she can't leave this service. I'm like, you know who this would have never happened to? This would have never happened to my father. Because my father would not have driven away without checking the gas tank. My father would not, my dad came from the country of Colombia, third world country, lived on dirt floors without houses. Whatever you think broke is, my dad was broke on steroids. He was the second oldest of 13. They had absolutely nothing. He came to the United States 1979, got a job at a bank shoveling snow for $2 an hour in Chicago. And one day the bank president showed up at 4.30 in the morning. My dad was out there shoveling the snow and he was impressed by how my dad shoveled the snow. So he said, you don't work outside anymore. You work inside and gave him a raise. Now he was making a hefty $4 an hour. Before my father retired from the bank to go into full-time ministry, that man that came from a third world country was the vice president of that bank. And what, but what my dad taught us with all of that is that that's what hard work will do. 
my dad, if you won a piano recital, if you won a trophy at a piano recital, but you didn't practice, my dad wouldn't celebrate the trophy. He wanted to know how hard did you work for it? Did you put the time into it? Did you put the energy and the effort? That's just the way my dad was. And my dad would not live sloppy. We would go on road trips with my father. In a, and this is in the 80s before you had GPS and maps. Some of you fancy people that had AAA, you'd at least go and get the, the map and they'd have the yellow highlighter. We didn't have the yellow highlighter. We had the, yeah, we're going to go this way. And my dad would stop all the time to just top off the gas tank. And one day I asked my dad, why do you do that? Why do we got to stop at every gas station? And my dad could never stop being a preacher. He didn't know how. I mean, he was a preacher all day long. I can still see that finger come out. I said, why do we got to stop all the time? And he turned around, because you don't know when the next gas station will appear. You don't know if it's going to be open. You don't know what's going to, I mean, he was just altar call all the time. You don't know. And he'd say, you got to live ready for what might happen. And I'm telling Gina this story while the pump is pumping. I said, that's the difference between that generation and this generation. We have become experts at living on E. If your car gets to E, I'm telling you, 75% of this crowd right now, when your car gets to E and it says you need gas, you say, not yet. I still got a good 12 miles left before I got to get gas. It's not till that needle starts a shaking and tickling the bottom line of the E, then I got to get gas. We have become experts at living on empty and what's done in the natural is also done in the spiritual. And that's what's wrong with the Pentecostal church. We used to be full of the Holy Ghost, full of prayer, full of consecration. But we're empty, we're void, and we're living off of the fumes of our mother's prayer life and our prayers, our father's prayer life. We're living off of the fumes of what a previous generation did. And I'm here to tell you in Jesus' name, ladies and gentlemen, you can't afford to be on empty right now. You can't afford to be living on fumes. We're too close to the coming of the Lord. And I don't want to find you broken down on the side of the road I come as God's messenger to tell you you better get right you better get ready and you better be full of the Holy Ghost because Jesus is coming again give him praise in this house I'm not I know I'm not contending that we have to do everything the way they used to do it we used to have to be in church two or three times on a Sunday and then back again for midweek and then back again for choir and then back again for youth service and then back again for Saturday service. The only hope you had to backside was Monday and nobody sins on a Monday. But we went from one exaggeration. No, I don't want to call it an exaggeration. We went from one extreme to another. We went from 11 services a week to one service a week. And then we're trying to understand why we don't have power over demons and power over temptation and power to reverse the curse over the nation. We're living on empty. We're living on empty. We're not full the way we used to be. But Ephesians says you got to be careful how you live in these evil days. These are evil days, ladies and gentlemen. And you can't afford to not be prayed up. You can't afford to not be in the word. Let me encourage you today from this day forward, before you check your email in the morning, before you check to see if anybody liked what you posted last night on Instagram, before you go see what Elon Musk is tweeting today, before you talk to your spouse get in the word first and find out what thus saith the Lord because this is what's happening we're going to CNN and Fox and social media first and they're putting us in the pit and then we go to the word and the word's having to pull us out of the pit but if you go to the word first everything else will be funneled through what thus saith the Lord and so when the enemy tries to pull you down you say nope I already got a word from the Lord. God's going to make that fail. Uh, no, I already heard about that. God's going to make everything the devil tried. You got to get in the word. Get full of the word. These elections happen. Everybody's upset at Gen Z or whatever it is for how they voted. And, 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 and you're piling on them. Who's, it's not their fault. I got to take, if my kids do wrong, I got to take responsibility. As a parent, we took Sunday school out of our churches. 
We took memory verses out of our churches. We stopped teaching the word the way it was taught to us. We gave, I'm not talking about this church. Maybe you didn't do it here, but for the audience watching around the world right now, stop sending your children to another room, giving them popcorn and a movie while you're in the presence of God and then wondering why they don't know how to shout, they don't know how to clap, they don't know how to prophesy, and they don't have authority. I am the way I am because my mom and dad had me in a Pentecostal altar and made sure I prayed through every week there are devils that our children are fighting today that are nothing like what we had to fight in the 70s 80s and 90s and you can't beat these devils on an empty prayer life teach your children how to tap into the presence of God you can't live on empty I'm just there preaching to Gina I said that was the difference that's where the holiness movement came out of, of which I come from. Those holiness people were so full of love for their God that they'd say, whatever it takes to draw closer to you, Lord, that's what I'll be willing to do. I remember that song when I was a kid. I told you I'm an old soul. There was a verse in there. Take my houses and land, change my dreams and my plans, for I'm laying my whole life in your hands. There was other songs we used to sing back in those days. Above all else, I must be saved. And whatever you have to do to me, don't let me be lost for eternity. I used to get so scared singing that as a teenager. I'm like, God, don't kill me. Please don't kill me. You get to that line, whatever you got to do. I remember backsliding, doing dumb things when I was a kid. And my dad pray outside of my room. He'd get outside of the door and I, could, I, I knew my dad was on his knees and I could hear him hitting the door. Go to sleep. And at the same time, he's hitting the door. Oh, God, save Tony. Oh, God, save Tony. God, whatever you got to do to him, save him. God, if you got to take him, do it. And I'm under the blanket. I'm like, God, don't kill me, please. God, let me live. And we could laugh about the way it was, but you know what? Our parents kept our houses full of prayer, full of faith, and you know what happened? A rebellious teenager under the blankets started praying through and saying, God, whatever it takes, I'm gonna be saved. God, I'm gonna live for you. I'm telling you, we gotta get back to some old-fashioned fundamentals that the church knows. We can't counsel everything out. We can't vote everything out, but there's power in prayer. There's power in the name of Jesus, but you can't have that power if you're empty and void of the Holy Ghost I come as an old voice to tell you tonight you must be filled and full of the Holy Ghost it's not Pentecostal doctrine apostolic doctrine charismatic doctrine it's the promise of the Father available to all flesh and I come to remind you you need the Holy Ghost give him praise in this house for a moment Just be careful. How, am I okay, Pastor? Be careful how you live. Don't live foolish, foolishly. Don't be drunk with wine. Maybe I shouldn't do it here, but I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I got too many friends that open a gateway called alcohol. There are places they don't want to be because they open a door. The Lord spoke to my heart at the beginning of the year. He said, I gave my people the new wine and they still want to partake of the old wine. The old wine that, lead, that leads to death and destruction, but the new wine gives them joy and gives them glory. Why are we still partaking? I'm telling you, there's nothing good that comes from it. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but you take it to the Lord and see what he tells you. But I'm telling you, this is still a holiness church. The world's systems have failed. Everything has failed. And they're going to look to us because we're going to be the last man standing. And if they look to us and we look like them and talk like them and cuss like them and drink like them and smoke like them and, are, and we got the same junk in our house like they do, they're going to say, what profit would it be to me to join the church? But if they look at us and they find joy and peace and hope in the Holy Ghost, if they find holiness and righteousness, I'm not talking about judgmentalism, I'm not talking about legalism, but if they find that there's a standard of truth in the house, they're going to say, that's what I've been looking for all my life. I'm prophet 
prophesying to you tonight, revival is not coming. Revival is here. And it's a revival of holiness. It's a revival of consecration. It's a revival of prayer. This generation wants it. These young people want it. They're hungry for the supernatural. They want, and we got it. Why don't we give it to them? You need the Holy Ghost. I'm just checking the time. All right. I'm going to speed this thing up. We're experts at living on empty. When you read through the book of Acts, they were not just filled one time. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost isn't like, you know, it's not like a birthday where you get a certificate. And we used, some old customs we used to do in the church, you get a certificate the day you got the Holy Ghost. That's your Holy Ghost birthday. Hey. The purpose of the Holy Spirit was never to give you a Holy Ghost birthday. It was to give you access to a fountain of power that you can tap into every day. This is the fountain of power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. I want you to understand what's living on the inside of you tonight. When Je I would submit to you, Jesus was in the tomb, but he wasn't in the tomb alone because the Holy Ghost snuck into that tomb. That Holy Spirit went by those Roman soldiers and wiggled through those rocks and raised the Son of God from the dead. Now, if the Holy Ghost could raise the Son of Man from the dead, imagine what the Holy Ghost can bring you out of. You say, well, Pastor, I just, I'm insecure and I don't, I don't think God can do it. And you don't know my story. You're right. You're right. There's nothing good that's probably come from your life. But Acts 1 and 8 says that you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the Amplified Version says you shall become capable, efficient, and mighty. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Brother Tao, uh, Brother Tao, in the natural, you might be worthless to this world. But in the Holy Ghost, you're a mighty man of God that's got a mighty revival on the inside of you. And if the devil could, he would shut you up because he knows that your harvest is in the millions. So I say... Raise your voice in the power of the Holy Ghost and let God use you. Hallelujah. This nation, if I say Donald, half of you are going to get upset. And I say Joe, the other half are going to get upset. The Lord spoke to me at the beginning of the year and he said, you know, I'm still a jealous God. And I hear my people saying Donald and Joe a lot more than I hear them saying the name of Jesus. You remind them Donald can't save them and Joe can't help them. But there's still power in the name of Jesus. You say Donald and Joe, you get people angry, but you say Jesus, peace comes, joy comes. We need a church that isn't Republican or Democrat, but we're lion, lamb, and dove. Everywhere we go, we carry the message of peace. Everywhere we go, we carry the message of joy. Everywhere we go, we're spirits of reconciliation, drawing people back to Christ. America needs Holy Ghost revival. Hallelujah. We don't need as many recounts as we need praying through. You say, well, preacher, you must be ignorant to the racial tension happening. In front. Oh, no, I'm very aware of it. I'm very aware. And I'm very aware that history teaches that the only thing that's ever brought people together is the Holy Ghost. 1901, when the Holy Ghost fell. By the way, I could take care of the gender war and the racial war right now. Every time God wants to do something big on the earth, he uses a woman. When God decided he was going to bring Jesus Christ to this earth to redeem mankind, he chose a woman named Mary. And when God decided he was going to give this world the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost that they've ever seen, he chose a woman named Agnes Osmond and another woman named Lucy Farrell to be baptized in the Holy Ghost before Charles Parham ever caught the Holy Ghost. Took care of that one in the holy city. Glory to God. 1901, Holy Ghost fell at Charles Parham's Bible College on Agnes Osmond. They say she wrote in Chinese characters for three days, spoke in other tongues. Here's Parham teaching on the Holy Ghost, and she got something he didn't have yet, and he could just study it. But there was another young lady, an African-American young lady named Lucy Farrell from Norfolk, Virginia. She caught the ghost too, hallelujah. And she was a cook for Charles Parham. And she wrote a letter to a friend of hers in Houston named William Seymour. She said, Brother Seymour, you need to get what they got. And she said, Parham's coming to Houston. You need to get in the room. And so he tried to get in the room, and they wouldn't let him in the room because of the color of his skin. And so Parham gets back to Topeka, and William Seymour tries to get in that classroom too, and they won't let him in because of the color of his skin. But there was one person that said, if you'll just get by the window, 
I'll crack the window open. And Seymour had a right to be upset. Seymour had a right to be angry at what was happening, but he was consumed with the Holy Ghost. So he put his ear up to the window so that he could hear this message. History teaches us that Lucy Farrell left there and went to Azusa to talk, about, to talk to them about the Holy Ghost in Azusa. And they said, Lucy, who should we bring to preach? She said, well, I know a friend of mine. His name was William Seymour. And God took a black blind preacher that religion had rejected and brought him to Azusa to preach the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost that mankind had seen since the day of Pentecost. And in Azusa, nobody cared what the color of the preacher was or the person sitting to their left or right because they were consumed by the Holy Ghost. Amy Simple McPherson set up her tent and there was, back in those days, by the law, you had to hang a rope to divide white and black. Amy Simple McPherson wouldn't put the rope in her tent. Jack Cole wouldn't put the rope in his tent. And Amy Simple McPherson had the KKK walk into her integrated tent revival and her assistant said, Sister Amy, the KKK is here. What are we going to do? She said, let them in. I trust the Holy Ghost. Father, if Black Lives Matter wants to show up, if Antifa wants to show up, if anybody else full of hate and rage wants to show up, let them in, because I trust the Holy Ghost. <laughs> History says that those KKK members walked in and the power of God touched them and they walked up to an altar and they took their hoods off and they repented before God. They repented to their fellow man and that night they got saved and got full of the Holy Ghost. That happened in Amy Simple McPherson's tent. That happened in A.A. A. Allen's tent. That happened in Jack Coe's tent. That happened everywhere that the spirit of the Holy Ghost was preached and prophesied and demonstrated. And yes, every move of God divided because they got political and they got full of the things of the flesh. But as long as their focus was the Holy Ghost, people could worship together. People could go to church together. What America needs right now is a good old fashioned praying through until we're full of the Holy Ghost and we stop checking your voter card and we stop checking what race you are. And we say, listen, all I care is that we're here under the fountain of the Holy Ghost. All I care about is the presence of God. What America needs is an old fashion outpouring of the Holy Ghost and God says if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways if they'll call on me I will send my spirit we need the Holy Ghost musicians come just so that someone will have faith that I'm done Someone said, my God, I thought he was going to go another 20 minutes, but God made it fail. <laughs> you say, you sound like you don't have compassion. Well, I have, I have compassion, but I'm ready for victory. I'm ready for a solution. You know what I like about what I see tonight? You can't label this move of God here. We're all here worshiping together. Because we're hungry for God. January the 4th of this year. Some brothers would help me with this podium, please. After I get this sip of water. My God, this church has money. This Fiji water. You all ain't playing here. <laughs> I think I drank Nestle last night. That's what's wrong with my throat. If I'd have had Fiji water. That's, that's bougie water right there. My God, you know, I'm going to take that home. I don't have that at home. My God, that's, whew. January the 4th, I know I have issues. January the 4th, God spoke to my heart. And he said, this year, your eyes will see 100,000 people baptized in the Holy Ghost. I called a mentor of mine. I'm under submission called a mentor of mine. His name is Morton Bustard. He's a prophet of God. I called Brother Bustard. I said, Brother Bustard, I think God just told me that I'm, I'm, my eyes are going to see 100,000 people baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's kind of bold. He said, let the word marinate. He said, if it's of God, it will be confirmed. 
January the 5th, I got a call from an apostle on the East Coast I hadn't talked to in five years. He said, Brother Tony, I had a vision last night. Now, I have, mind you, I haven't told anybody this word. He said, I had a vision of you last night. You were standing in front of a group of people. In fact, it's a group that numbers 100,000. And I saw them being baptized in fire. Brother Buster said, let it marinate. Next night, I'm with evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth. And in the altar call, he said, Brother Tony, I have a hunch. We're going to have a harvest of 100,000 souls baptized in the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says in the mouth of two or three, but sometimes I got that Gideon thing going for me. And I'm like, Lord, one more, one more. So I'm preaching in Los Angeles. Pastor Brian Bolt says, Tony, I believe we're going to see 100,000 people baptized in the Holy Ghost this year. So I spoke it. I made it public because I trust the word. Today is November something, 2022. This past Sunday in Atlanta, Georgia, Pastor Miles Rutherford's church, Worship with Wonders, you couldn't preach. The Holy Ghost fell. It was an Acts 2 and 4 moment. Everybody got the Holy Ghost. Over 500 people just got the Holy Ghost. To date, this year, in the United States, we've seen 31,000 people baptized in the Holy Ghost this year in this country. Now, I'm not saying that to brag because it's not mine to give. It's the promise of the Father. I can water baptize somebody. I can pray for somebody. But only the Father can give the Holy Spirit. So it's, I, it's not that I've done it. I've seen 31,000 so far this year. Now, I, listen, I've been in church long enough. You just did the math and you said, ooh, you got a long way to go before the end of the year. I was scheduled to be in two different countries overseas. And they changed their laws in the last 60 days. And they prohibit Christian preachers from preaching in person. Not because of a sickness, but because of conversion. They've made it illegal in those two countries where we were expecting to have hundreds of thousands show up. But now I can't go because the government says it's illegal to convert someone out of Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism. So I can't go to either of those two countries. But thank God I'm from Chicago. And we read the law, and then we look for a way around the law. Glory to God. It's that spirit of Al Capone. Hallelujah. The law says I can't go in person. The law never said anything about setting up a screen in a field and inviting everybody to watch a movie where there's a preacher talking to them about Jesus and the Holy Ghost. So this Thursday... We're doing the very first crusade, and we're expecting thousands upon, <clears throat> upon thousands. We're doing about six of them between now and the end of the year. And I believe that if I didn't mess up tonight, and if they let me come back here in 2023, I believe with all my heart I'm going to stand in front of you and tell you, you know what God did? God baptized over 100,000 people with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I am closing. You say, well, preacher, I already got the Holy Ghost. Well, so I, I agree with your sermon. What, what does it have to do with me? Well, you know, I grew up in church where they're always trying to get us refilled with the Holy Ghost. We had to pray through every Sunday. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to, can I borrow you for a minute, sir? I promise it's going to be a little weird, but not too weird. Oh man, you're tall too. Just come stand right here. How old are you? I'm 18. 18. All right, good. If you just said like 13, then I, I'd have been at counseling tomorrow. Oh, yeah, great. Here we go. He's 12. Yeah. Look at the people. I pro it's going to be weird, but not too weird. Every Sunday in an altar, while I was standing up there, my mother would come behind. I'm taking my rings off because my mother didn't wear all this jewelry. <laughs> Hallelujah. My mother come behind me in the altar, get a hold of me, and she said, He love I don't want to mess up his hair, you know. <laughs> his helpmate might be waiting tonight on social media. I don't want to send him home with messed up hair. 
back in the 80s, the preacher to put his fingers right through that and mess that thing up. But I won't do that. I believe in grace. But my mother get a hold of my force. You know what my mom was doing? She was getting the spirit in me. She was getting the language in me. She was making sure that when I went to school that week, I wasn't going alone. I was going with the Holy Ghost. What's your name, young man? Connor. Connor, in my house, we were trilingual. We spoke English, Spanish, and Holy Ghost tongues. When I wanted to talk to my dad, I had to talk in Spanish porque ese era el idioma de mi papá. Entonces, para yo poder comunicar mejor con él, tenía que hablar su idioma. If I really wanted to talk good with my dad, I talked to him in Spanish because that was his language. Well, my dad passed away eight years ago. So I don't have to speak Spanish as much as I used to. Castillos haven't had me preach at their church in like five years because my Spanish is so bad now. I'm just teasing. But you know who doesn't speak Spanish now? My children. Because the language isn't spoken in the home. You know what happened to Pentecost under our watch? We lost the language because we stopped speaking in tongues in the church. We stopped speaking in tongues at home. We didn't want to offend anybody. And we raised up a generation that doesn't know the language of the Spirit. They don't know the sound of the Spirit. But I'm telling you, fill this house. Fill your house. Fill the car. Fill the atmosphere with the language of the Spirit until it consumes your children. I'm serious about this. I told one of my kids, thank you, Brother Connor. One of my kids is probably having nightmares because the other day I went and sat in his room at about two in the morning, sitting on the end of the bed. And he woke up, Dad. And I just looked at him. I said, you're not going to hell. <laughs> huh? I said, I'm not going to let you go to hell. You belong to the cross. You belong to the blood. And buddy, whatever I got to do, whatever I got to fight, I'm taking you to heaven with me. We're going to be together in heaven. I'm not letting you go to hell. He's probably having nightmares right now. Probably went and saw the school counselor. Something's wrong with my dad. Gene is walking up and down the corridors, like the corridors, the hallways of our house, touching doors, just speaking in tongues, not, not trying to be overly dramatic. What's she doing? She's making sure the house is full because devils are trying to take my kids. They're trying to attack my family. And we're making sure that when the demons of hell try to get in, they won't have any room because our house is full. We weren't just filled. We're staying full. We're making sure that when vaping and drugs and pornography and the vices of the flesh try to attack our home, when they try to come after our kids, the Holy Ghost will build up a hedge of protection and say, no, you can't get this one. He belongs to the Holy Ghost. Feel you so strong in this place, God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise You are awesome in this place Mighty God I want my kids to know the language I live with this healthy fear I'm going to call it fear 
that one day my grandkids will turn on whatever the YouTube is of their generation and they'll see a video of their grandfather Tony wagging a handkerchief and spinning and jumping and speaking in an unknown tongue and they're going to say Grandpa what was wrong with you? And if they ever ask me that question that means Pentecost died with me. I'm making sure the language stays alive. The Everything that makes us who we are. I've, I've devoted my life. I've told God till the trumpet sounds or till the grave comes. I will be a remnant for Pentecost. I will not let Pentecost die in my generation. I will not let the sons of Pentecost that went seeker sensitive rob and fornicate the holy place of God. I will contend for this with all of my heart. I will not have fellowship with darkness. I will stand for this because it's the answer. You say, preacher, I have the Holy Ghost. What does it have to do with me? Well, like in that story that I started with, all I needed was a refilling. I just needed to put more gas in the car. You don't think there's anything weird about refilling your gas tank, even at these prices. You complain about it, but you still put gas in your tank. You put stickers on the gas pump and said, whatever you said. <laughs> Sorry. Forgot, forgot I'm in the church, not a political rally. But you, but you still put gas in the, and you didn't write a letter to Ford. Oh, if you're drinking Fiji water. You didn't write a letter to Land Rover. You didn't write Bentley and say, I don't think I should be having to put gas in the car all the time. You just understand that the more you drive, the more gas you need in the car. Well, listen, with the devils, you and I have had to be fighting with the things that have come against our family. It should not be any surprise to you that you need to come to the house of God and hook up and get a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Gina's grandmother, would you stand with me? Because that'll really make me close. Gina has a grandmother. We call her Mother Carver. She's 89 years old. She's had the Holy Ghost for over 68 years. It's a woman of God. She got the Holy Ghost in a tent revival, Johnson City, Tennessee. The McCools were preaching a tent revival. Twin brothers, Billy and Bobby McCool, 16 years old, were preaching a tent revival in Johnson City. And Mother Carver caught the Holy Ghost. It's never left her. I like to tease her when I see her. I say, Hey, Mother Carver, how many, how many different tongues do you speak in? I bet you speak in like four different dialects of Holy Ghost tongues. She'll say, oh, Tony, oh, Tony. We were in a revival service in Elizabethan, Tennessee at my in-laws church. And the evangelist said, if there be anyone that needs something from God, let him or her come now. And here comes Mother Carver down the center aisle on a walker. She's the only one. She's coming down. And you know how we do in the church. You don't have to admit it, but I'll tell you how we are. Somebody comes to the altar, you say, ooh, I knew something was up. I knew it. Yep, yep, yep. I knew. I saw them last Friday. Hey. So here comes Mother Carver, and I'm over at my preacher chair, and I'm thinking, why in the world is Mother Carver coming to the altar? She got to the front, and the evangelist said, Mother, what dost thou need from God? Because ah. in the old church, they put the mic in your face. You'd have to tell it all. And Mother Carver raised her hand, Pastor Toe, Tau, sorry, God help me, Lord. I, I, sorry, I speak it in tongues right there. Glory. The interpretation is thy name is Tau. Glory to God. <laughs> Lord, keep me spiritual for two more minutes to finish this sermon, and then you can be done with me. <laughs> he said, Mother Carver, what dost thou need from God? And she raised her hand. She said, oh, I just need a fresh touch. Oh, and I broke because my spiritual Pentecostal pride didn't let me come to the altar. 
Because what would they say if the preacher came to the altar? But here's Mother Carver's had the Holy Ghost for every for 68 years, and she said, I need a fresh touch. And that night I came to the altar and I said, God, if Mother Carver needs a fresh touch, I need a fresh touch. It's not because something's wrong with me. It's just that I'm living through this life and I can't make it without you. I can't make it without your Holy Spirit. And the more you read the book of Acts, you know what you find? They go from one meeting to another meeting to another meeting. And every time they assemble, they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they go to another house and they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. They go to another meeting and they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he didn't come to just fill you. He came to make sure that you're always filled full stop living on empty when you can be living on full now I know I took my time I know we've been here a long time but if there are any proverbial mother carvers in the room that need a fresh touch if you're here tonight and you'll say and you'll be honest say preacher I've been dealing with some stuff and I know God made it fail but I need a fresh touch if that's you, when I count to three, you better beat that man to this altar tonight. One, two, three. Where are you? Now, if you're here tonight and you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, this promise is unto you and unto your children and yea, unto your children's children. He'll fill you tonight. If you're here tonight and you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, I want you to come too. This is what God's called me to do tonight. Pray people through to the Holy Ghost. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Pastor Brian said something really resonated in my spirit because there's, we just met. He didn't know when I was going to preach. We, we don't know each other like that. We don't know each other's style of ministry. We, we don't, we just met. And this is what I was going to tell you. He already told you about speaking in tongues. The Bible says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And the Bible says that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall speak with new tongues. I didn't make it up. Peter got in trouble f saying it halfway joking, but he's preaching outside his denomination. Got in trouble. He got called before the district board. He didn't get permission to preach over there to those people. Well, they got the Holy Ghost. How do you know they got the Holy Ghost? Peter didn't say, Peter did not say we saw them spin. Well, they all fell out. Peter said, we heard them speak with tongues. That was the common denominator between Jew and Gentile to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, if your pastor teaches different, go with what your pastor. I'm just telling you what. Are we good, pastor? Wait, did you just say I'm going to hell if I don't speak in tongues? Don't put words in my mouth. But I'm asking you, why would you not want the Holy Ghost? If it raised Jesus from the dead, why would you not want it in your life? You say, well, I don't know why they chose tongues. I don't know either. When we get to the assimilation meeting in heaven and they open it up for Q&A, you ask them up there, yes, I like to know, but I got a hunch over there you're not going to care. Here's what Pastor Brian said that I was going to tell you. Is there, is there any moms right here? Anybody here that's a mom? You're, okay, a bunch of moms here. How old is your child? 
three months. Ooh, you're a perfect one for me to talk to right now. The baby, forgive me, because I got teenagers at home. They don't speak at three months, right? <laughs> Not yet, right? But I got a hunch. Is it a boy or a girl? When that boy says, Mama, you are going to fall out. You're going to be, ooh, my baby is Shakespeare. Oh, my God. He's got away with words. He's like a walking, talking Hallmark card. Ooh. And all he said was two syllables. Mama. But you can celebrate syllables. When I pray for you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost tonight, I'm not expecting you to conjugate Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic for 25 minutes. You might just get a few syllables, but speak it out. And then tomorrow, speak it out, and you're going to get more syllables. And syllables are going to turn into phrases, and phrases are going to turn into sentences, and sentences are going to turn into a language. And in about a year from now, you're going to be speaking in your prayer language, calling things as though they were interceding for nations and kingdoms that you know not of. But it starts tonight with a few syllables. If that mom right there can celebrate that baby's upcoming syllables, then tonight I can celebrate Holy Ghost syllables. It might just be a little. That's what Pastor was talking about earlier. It might, you might, might just sound like a baby and gibberish, but you speak it out and you keep talking it until you get your full Holy Ghost language. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Last instruction and then I'm going to pray. Singers, I need you too. Forgive me. For, oh, there they are. Come on up here. I get nervous when I'm up here alone. Come over here, singers. Last instruction. The Bible does not say you'll think in tongues. It says you'll speak with tongues. You got to speak it out. When I pray the prayer of faith over you right now, I'm going to pray and ask the Father to pour out the Holy Spirit because I can't give it to you. It's His gift to give. But I'm going to pray the way I know to pray. And when I finish that prayer and I shout the word, now, I want you to open your mouth give God a shout of praise and start speaking in that Holy Ghost tongue. I'm believing that we're going to have another Acts 2 and 4 moment. Those of you watching at home right now, the same promise is unto you. The same anointing that's in this house is flowing through that cable and flying, flowing right through your home. That same anointing that's sitting here is going to hit you. Put it in the comment section when God fills you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me. I'm going to sing it one more time, then you do whatever you want. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. I got to pray for you, but something just came to my memory. Pastor Miles, if you're watching, God just brought your mom and brought that other lady. I think it, you told me it was your sister and an aunt that needs a miracle tonight. Father, I send the word of healing to Sister Sue. I send the word of healing to the other family member that Pastor Miles asked me to pray for. And I command that ear to open right now by the authority of the word of God and by the power that's in the name of Jesus. Touch, oh, come on, and be healed right now. Ears are opening right now. Yesterday, yesterday morning in Denver, Colorado, Pastor Miles sent me an email of a woman that was deaf in her right ear. 20 years, she has not heard out of her right ear. She woke up yesterday morning and she, her ear, her, her ability to hear has been completely restored. God reversed a 20 year curse. And the good news is if God did it for her, he'll do it for you tonight. I'm gonna pray this prayer over you. When I shout the word now, you're going to give God a shout of praise and begin to speak in tongues and don't stop. Get full, get extra full, get everything the Father has. 
Some of you ministry, you prayer workers, you prayer team that are here, you got to lay hands and help me pray people through to the Holy Ghost. I'm believing God that between this sanctuary and those watching at home, the number doesn't really matter. But Father, I'm asking for a harvest of at least a thousand tonight that are baptized in the Holy Ghost between the sanctuary and the online audience. If you're ready, raise your hands right now in the presence of God. Singers, musicians, you come in strong with whatever you want to sing as soon as I shout now. Father, I've preached your word as you've commanded me to do. Now I ask you tonight, fill this room like you filled the upper room. Send the Holy Spirit and baptize your people. And may they show forth the evidence of speaking in other tongues by the authority of the Word of God and by the power that's in the name of Jesus of Nazareth receive ye the Holy Ghost now 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 Be filled, be filled. Come on, speak forth that Holy Ghost tongue. Speak forth that Holy Ghost tongue. Speak forth that Holy Ghost tongue tonight. That Holy Ghost tongue. That Holy Ghost tongue tonight. Harabasara la bosaya, hecha bosa, barre bosa bande, brasa re bosa bashaya, fire. Basse brasso bosse bestia, basse he 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 he, osha kaso tamahaya, hato shamande sa, hasha hato hato roho she, uh. Oh, Father, revival in Miami. Avivamiento in Miami in the name of Jesus Christ. Abraza Bosha. Eva se. Son de Sike. Abase. Base resho tamahe. Hasho kosabahai. Ese re shere sorabai. Hosabashere. Broshabate y le bosi baye her konda de basaya. Hoshe kosianda. Haseya Bosaya, Hallelujah. Oh, Samashe, fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over and feed me up till I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over. Prayer team. Ministry team, help me lay hands on people and pray people through to the Holy Ghost tonight. Make sure they get refilled until they're overflowing with the power of Pentecost. I speak life over you tonight, restoration over you tonight, healing upon you as the prayer team is praying people through to the Holy Ghost. If you've been dealing with what, I don't know how else to describe it, but what's like, it's like a fake heart attack. You thought you've had a heart attack, but it's, it's, it, it, I, but it, it, the doctor almost, it's almost like something was faking a heart attack, but it's been attacking your chest and you need healing today. Run up right here to the center. God wants to touch you right now. God wants to touch you right now. Hallelujah. 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 If there's a Cindy in this room that needs healing, wave your hand at me, Cindy. You're Cindy. That was just God showing you. He knows your name and he knows where you are and you're not forgotten and you're not alone and God has seen you in the secret place and he knows your secret prayer and God says you prayed in private but I'm going to bless you in public and people have spoken and they've attacked but God says I'm going to bless you this year. Touch! Ooh. Mm. 
I'm going to pray for that, whatever that fake false heart attack is. But as soon as I took your hand, I heard God say to me, this is a woman that has been stolen from, robbed, even by people that she loves. But they've robbed, they've stolen. You came up here with empty hands. But when you touched my hand, I felt God tell me to tell you, I'm going to give you back what was stolen. I'm going to restore years that you lost to depression, years that you lost to poverty. God says, it might not come from the person that stole it, but I, the Lord, keep a record in heaven, and I know everything that belongs to you. So anxiety is coming off of you tonight in Jesus' name. You're being set free from stress tonight, and God says, I'm about to make you very happy this Christmas season in Jesus' name. Touch and be healed right now by the power of God. Lord, as you take care of her heart, she needs a blood transfusion right now. She's a little low in iron right now. But even as I'm touching, I feel warmth flowing through her body right now. In about seven seconds, the miracle's gonna be complete. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Touch! Ooh, it never be the same. Hallelujah. I pull heart disease out of your bloodline. I pull heart irregularities out of your bloodline. And I say it doesn't matter who else it affected. It won't affect you. And by the time I lay hands on you, he doesn't just heal your physical heart. He heals your broken heart tonight in Jesus' name. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. I don't know if I, oh yes, I do remember another time I prayed for this. If you're flat footed and you need arches in your feet, I'd run right up to this area right here. You're flat footed and you need arches. There's one. Is there someone else? Get on over here, sis, and get your arches. I looked at you, and I see the joy of the Lord all over you. Goodness and mercy follows you everywhere that you go. And I'm telling you, some good stuff is coming to your house this year. What the devil tried, God has made it fail. And that last thing that's still been coming up against you, God's going to make that one fail too. This is going to be a good year. This is going to be a good holiday. In 2023, you're not coming to church alone, says the Spirit of the Lord. You're coming with some people that need to be with you. You stood firm, even on flatted feet, because you're strong in the Spirit. God says I heal your feet tonight I heal your family tomorrow and God says about this time next year you're going to be like Hannah you're going to be bringing Samuel to the house of the Lord raise your hands raise your hands anyone else flat footed I speak to those feet by the authority that God has given me and I command arches to be created right now in Jesus name no more foot pain, no more pain, no more sciatica. You're completely healed by the power of God. Hey, right now, in Jesus' name, touch right now. Oh, this is gonna sound so cliche, brother. Are you here alone? Your wife's back there? Oh, hey wife, don't get mad at me for what I'm about to say. Because when I went to touch your head, I heard retire, but I heard the Lord say, no, I'm sorry. I heard retire, but the Lord said, tell him no. Refire, I know it's cliche. You're about to catch your second wind, my brother.
You're about to catch your second wind, and in your second wind is another harvest of blessing. God is going to bless you in your golden years. These are years of prosperity for you. God's healing your feet. He's healing your back. He's taking care of some other things. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes and nose, ear and mouth. Everything and overflow. Get ready to be refired in the Holy Ghost. God's about to bless your home. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. If you need healing in your body, I know it's late, but you waited longer in the line at Disney World to get on a boring ride than you had to wait for this healing right now. There's someone here that needs... I, when, you, when you step into something, since, since there's some Bible college students here, when you step into something, you'll become sensitive to it and you'll be able to feel it in different places. So this is probably the fourth time I've spoken this. Never spoke it before, but this fourth time I feel to speak it. Someone that your, your, your insurance won't cover what you need or maybe the copay is a little out of the range. But I want you to know that the blood of the lamb and the stripes on his back cover what every PPO and HMO won't cover. You're covered tonight by the blood. And I'm saying what the insurance won't cover, the blood covers right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Whatever surgery, whatever medical procedure or even medicine that you need that it seems out of your grasp because of the bureaucracy of insurance, we cut the red tape tonight in the name of Jesus. And we say that by his stripes, you are healed right now. Father, I thank you. I thank you. If someone over here is dealing with long-term COVID, I cast it out of your lungs right now in Jesus' name. That rattle hasn't left you, but you rattle no more. Take one deep breath. <sighs> Breathe it out. The rattle's gone. God's healed you and touched you right now. I give you praise, mighty God. Whew. Oh, God, I praise you. Hallelujah. If you need healing in this house, and I haven't called you out, God's already demonstrated that he knows what's here. So if he would do it for them, why wouldn't he do it for you? I know we've been here a long time, but just a few more moments. If you need a miracle, if you need healing in your body, just stretch that hand up to heaven right now. my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord your healer he's speaking to you right now I am the God that healeth thee I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. Now I'm claiming it. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my, just claim it over your body right now. You are, you are the God that healeth me. 
You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my, in the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, be restored now by the power of God. Start praising him right now and walk into your healing because he sent his word. Oh, you sent your word, you sent your word, and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my. One last time, I'll give it to Pastor. You are, you are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord. You've waited a long time. God says now. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your you sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord.